Hello there, mid-June. Welcome to my garden, Essex South East UK. My name is Dan. So we're going to have a little look around the garden today, a little garden tour, and do some picking as we go round. So I grow a lot of my strawberries up here on top of my water containers. So I've got a variety here called Malling Centenary. It's a really nice variety of strawberry. Very important commercially bred for easy picking. They taste great as well, and they make a nice size. So let's uh, have a look up here. So hopefully this is coming out clearly. I uh, protect them from the birds using these net curtains here. They are really good for that. So growing them up here on top of these water containers is a great thing to do because this area I can't really use for too much other than storage, but yet I also don't really want to be having my too many strawberry plants in the ground in the garden because they take up a lot of space for the amount of crop you get. They're only a relatively short cropping plant and the rest of the time, of course, the plants are taking up the ground and they're not yielding anything. So this is a great use of space up here. So as we go under the net curtains, now you can see I've got the net curtains weighed down using these block pavers. You could use bricks, logs, whatever, stones, anything that works really. Now, the other night I didn't actually uh, cover them over as well as I could have after my picking and I think a bird got in there or something and had a go at the uh, strawberries. So you want to be careful, make sure you protect them properly. So let's have a look. Oh yeah, crikey, look at, oh, I mean, look at that. These are beautiful strawberries, they really are. Malling Centenary, it's a really nice variety of strawberry to grow. Sometimes people uh, criticize, you see, look at that, look, something's happened to that one there, but uh, that'd be okay still. Sometimes, yeah, we'll leave that one, I'll put that somewhere, let the slugs have it. But yeah, sometimes people criticise modern varieties of strawberries, saying that uh, the flavour's not that good. Well, I'm telling you now, Malling Centenary, in my opinion, are an absolutely delicious variety of strawberry to grow. Plenty of taste, juicy, and uh, just a beautiful, tasty strawberry, and uh, high yielding as well, certainly in this case anyway. So there we are, a nice... Uh, little yield for today's picking of these strawberries here. So regarding the growing of strawberries in containers or pots, you want a nice fertile growing medium. You want it to be well draining. They don't like the roots sitting in too much moisture. So you can actually buy ready-made compost. So something like Levington vegetable compost would do, maybe mix that with about 60 or 70% or so of that compost and maybe 30% multi-purpose compost, something like that. The growing medium I've got in there is a combination of my own soil from this garden here, which is quite sandy, and also I'll have put some sort of compost that I've made myself in over the years. I always work on making my own compost if possible. I've got many videos on that, but ultimately you want it fertile, but yet well draining. So regarding feeding you could consider feeding them with something like a an organic tomato feed something like that every two or three weeks or so during the growing season i haven't fed these once actually this year but um, most or at least this growing season anyway so most of these have actually been i think i planted them up around last year a few of them may have already been in from a previous year but some of them are new plants this is their first year and they yielded quite well so yeah strawberries all looking good. So this part of the garden here is really coming on nicely. All sorts, got some grapes over there that are starting to look quite uh, nice, the little uh, baby bunches, so that's really cool. Here as well, I'm really happy with these sunflowers. Now, I don't know what variety these are, but I was actually given the seeds of these by another gardener, and they've grown very well. So quite a lot happening here. So uh, let's uh, take a closer look. So yeah, Echinacea, these look really nice. I actually uh, purchased the bare root plants of these earlier in the year, and I'm very much looking forward to uh, getting a nicer uh, crop of Echinacea, said to have many health benefits. So uh, yeah, you might want to uh, look into those, but yeah, the plants are doing well, and uh, I expect this area to go from strength to strength. I'm in the process of learning more about herbs, etc. herbs for healing. It's a slow process, but uh, yeah, Echinacea, I get the impression, is quite a good one to start with, so that's why uh, I've got a nice little section of that here. So yeah, over here, got some blueberries, so this is variety Duke, and 
got a lovely little crop here, just uh, going to be picking them, mixing them with my strawberries. Duke, I'm just uh, going to read you a bit. It's um, another widely planted, early ripening, northern high bush variety. It's a heavy, consistent producer with attractive, firm, light blue, savoury, sweet quality berry. Duke blooms late, but ripens early. Protects the blossoms from spring frosts. So, yeah, certainly got a good crop here and a nice early ripening blueberry. So I really love blueberries. In uh, recent years, you know, you hear people refer to them as a, as a superfood. You know, sometimes that phrase isn't really liked that much because, you know, but um, one thing's for sure, there's a lot of nutrients in these and they are very good for you, or can be. So uh, we'll have a little look at our little yield today of Duke blueberries. I've got other varieties here as well. One variety I've got is Elliot, which is a late ripening variety. And I can see from here the, the plants are laden with fruit. So it's looking actually like it's gonna be a good year of Duke blueberries, just as the car with a loud engine has started. So isn't that wonderful? Blueberries and a car with a loud engine in the background. There we are. So anyway, there we go. So look at that look. Nice little uh, yield of blueberries there. Mix that all in with my strawberries. Beautiful. So down here I've got some onions. Now these are variety Sturon. Really nice. So making a good size and plenty more time for these to get bigger. So I grew these from sets. I can't claim that uh, I grew them from seed myself because I didn't. But uh, the sets were very good and uh, actually turned out, turning out to be some quite nice onions. So what I quite often like to do when I'm working in the garden here is like something like this, you know. very tasty and very good for you. Maybe don't kiss someone straight after you've uh, eaten these, but uh, I really enjoy that because it's like a real natural sort of oniony spiciness to accompany you as you move around the garden. And you really can turn your garden into your own little foraging patch, if you will, where you can really just have enjoyment of eating really good quality home homegrown organic fruit and veg which is a you know a wonderful thing to uh, to go for even if you don't really grow that much you know even if you just aim for a little bit very satisfying and uh, your body will certainly thank you for it with regards to the uh, nutrients uh, it will give you so as we go into the poly tunnel here whoosh oh, oh, really can uh, feel the heat there it's looking great in here actually so I've got all sorts of things growing in here I'm going to actually be making a dedicated polytunnel video relatively soon but polytunnels have always been well not always but certainly in recent years been a big part of my gardening especially in a climate such as the UK where the weather is not necessarily you know that warm by warm standards really can open up doors this polytunnel is Brilliant. I've had a bigger one before, many of you may have seen that, but if you can find a way of getting a polytunnel or a greenhouse at your garden or your allotment, if you're allowed, it really can be a great thing to do. And uh, yeah, if you can't have a polytunnel or a greenhouse, you can look into a cold frame or like a mini greenhouse, or whatever. You probably, once you get one, you'll be very glad you did. So peaches. Now, many of you are aware of how fond I am of growing peaches. This is one of my trees. This is variety Peregrine. It's an old-fashioned variety, very tasty white flesh. So we've got some nice peaches there, some up there, some up the back, it's looking like about 30 or so peaches. So that's really good. I've got nectarines over there at the back and all sorts of lovely heat-loving crops growing down here. But we'll be covering those in the video that uh, I mentioned earlier. So here I'm uh, growing some spearmint. So there's said to be many potential benefits from spearmint, one of which is it can apparently act as some sort of sedative to help you sleep. Now, you've got to be very careful though with herbs, you know, and indeed anything really, you know, do your own research and talk to someone who really knows what they're doing regarding herbalism. I really don't know that much at all about it. I'm very much sort of the early stages of it, but I am looking into it. So if there's anyone out there who knows the benefits of spearmint, etc., and maybe also some people that maybe should potentially avoid it, etc., you know, feel free to comment. But uh, yeah, so this is another sort of herb I'm getting into. So echinacea and some spearmint 
and I've got a few others as well, but uh, grew these from seed. You don't need to grow these in the polytunnel. These do perfectly okay out here. I just raised them in here when it was a bit colder by planting the seeds in these pots here and away they went. So yeah, spearmint, that's uh, another herb I'm adding to my collection. So this here, this is a lovely variety of pea I'm growing. This is called Champion of England Tall Climbing Pea and they are starting to be ready. Had a nice pick of them the other day. So uh, there we are like this, quite a historical variety. So let's uh, pick open one of these. Now peas are one of my other favorites, if you want to call them that, for, uh, you know, for um, garden foraging, they're just lovely. Now I could have left these a bit longer, to be honest, because they're, they're, they're tiny, but that's fine, you know. I'm not growing any uh, giant pea peas for competition, but cool, yeah. I mean, when they're small like this, yeah, they're small, but they ain't half sweet. That's really nice. So peas are a good one to grow. All sorts of different varieties. Had I given these the care they deserved, I would have trained them up this here, up this wigwam. But uh, these can get to about eight to 10 feet tall. If, if, if you look after them properly. I didn't do that, but if you want to get like a more dwarf variety, Meteor is a good one, very tightly packed pods. But yeah, peas, lovely to grow at home. So in the garden here, behind the peas and in front of this polytunnel here, and I've got lovely yellow raspberries. So these are a variety called Golden Queen. I bought the original plants, crikey, must have been five or so years ago. <laughs> and you can see they really have multiplied and they should get stronger every year more and more as they sort of you know, propagate and then they propagate from the propagated ones by putting the canes up. So because of that, raspberries can be seen by some as being invasive if they're put you know, somewhere and then you end up with strawberry, sorry, raspberry plants everywhere that you then can't get rid of if you want to. For me, that's not a problem because this here is very much a form of permaculture for me because I've made no effort with these at all. No effort at all, apart from initially planting them and then cutting them back when needed. But yeah, I can literally just come out here. Whoops. I can come out here and I can just pick through my bushes here of raspberries. And I've almost got a handful already and there's plenty more where these came from. There's all sorts of varieties of raspberry you can get. You can get red ones, yellow ones, you can get summer fruiting, autumn fruiting, have a combination of the both, different colors, different fruiting times, etc. but yeah. So these are really sweet. Now, as you can see, Golden Queen's quite a small raspberry, but the sweetness is beautiful. And if you had some fruits of different colours, you know, in a fruit bowl or something, really would be nice because uh, you could form like all different colours of fruit. Looks colourful and just think of the nutrients in these. And as I stated, beyond the initial purchase of the plants, very little effort at all and quite high, quite high yielding for the space they take up. So down here I've got a variety of cabbage called earliest of all. And this is a really nice one. I've grown this many, well, say many, quite a few times before. My long, many of my long-term viewers have seen you know, me grow these in the past. They're relatively early in terms of when they crop. Cabbage very nutritious. I think it has been said to be potentially good for you know, rheumatism, aches and pains, etc. So you might want to look into that. But yeah, protect them from the cabbage white butterflies. You can see here, I've got them under this uh, nesh met, mesh 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 netting there you go something like that in order to keep the cabbage white butterflies off the butterflies will be about soon not too long now and weighted down using these logs here oh yeah should be getting some nicer cabbage in uh, hmm, probably about six weeks or so maybe even a bit less so i'm really liking how the garden here is maturing so i've been here now for i think it's yeah around eight years something like that and it was quite a blank canvas, to be honest, when I first moved in here. And now it's, uh, you know, starting to look like a mature, mature garden, which is yielding really well, which is what I want. So you can see here, we've got more raspberries. Now, it could be more ordered, definitely. That certainly would be a fair point. Uh, people could say, Dan, you could maintain your garden a bit better and give things more 
uh, more attention. That is true, but uh, you know, we have to fit gardening in with other things in life as well. And to be honest, one doesn't always want to spend all their time out in the garden. Sometimes one wants to do other things as well. So, um, you know, if your garden ends up looking a bit ropey, as long as it ain't too bad, you know, cut yourself some slack. Don't let perfection get in the way of the good, so to speak. So, here we are. Now, this here, whoops, is a, it's a black currant plant. There we go, whoops, just dropped off there. Always makes me think of like Ribena when I was a kid, you know. Used to drink a lot of that stuff when I was a kid. I think a lot of uh, kids born in the 1980s did. So, here we go. Black currant there. Really good, nice and tangy. I have read that uh, during World War II, they were used as a citrus substitute when not so much citrus was getting through. May or may not be true, I don't know, I wasn't there. Any of you know about that claim? I can see it, because uh, they are tangy like citrus and could be used for that. And of course, like all of the fruits I'm showing you here, very nutritious indeed, so yeah. And as I'm looking, these raspberries have really gone everywhere. Got some apples here, let's have a look at those. So over here, this part of the garden got uh, quite a bit going on. I actually strimmed this a few days ago, simply because it was starting to get a little bit out of hand. I wanted to let it get a bit natural, but uh, there's a limit between a bit natural and um, looking completely unkempt, uncared for, and not really how it should be. So I strimmed it down and it looks much better indeed. So I've got my bird feeding area here. The birds love flying in and out of here. Got a bird box there. I've left some ivy up the fence there because the birds like flying in amongst that. So that's good. Now apples, this is variety gala. So many of you will be well accustomed to apple gala because it's a, it's a supermarket variety of apple, or should I say is readily available in supermarkets. Now, sometimes people knock the gala apple and say, oh, you know, it's a typical uh, supermarket apple with nothing spectacular about it. But I like gala apples, actually, I do. You know, they are nice and sweet. And I don't know, something about gala apples, I, I just like them. They're very important commercially, of course, you know, many places grow them. So gala here, very good. Now this tree only cost me four pounds, probably or oh, some years ago now, but I got it from Aldi, you know, the supermarket. And it's been a very good tree indeed. It's way more than paid for itself with regards to apple yields. So that's really good. And of course, you wouldn't get that tree for four pounds now. You'd probably have to pay a bit more for it. But quite often, some of the budget supermarkets, well, I say budget supermarkets, some of the supermarkets they do do fruit trees earlier, early in the year, which you can get for quite a good price. That can be a good thing. The only thing that I have sometimes found is when you maybe buy cheaper trees, maybe they're not necessarily gonna be the variety you think that, uh, you know, that they are. This one was fine. This is, this is a gala, I can see it is. But uh, you might end up buying one variety and it turns out being another. So be aware of that. Sometimes it, if you really want a specific variety, you know, you want to make sure that you get it from a very trusted place, ideally, because uh, let's say you've always wanted a Victoria plum, and then you plant a Victoria plum, and then six, seven years later, when you get your first crops, it turns out to be a, a plum that's definitely not a Victoria plum, you could be disappointed. So you understand where I'm coming from. Now here, this is apple variety Worcester pear main, quite an early ripening variety of apple was once important commercially in the UK. Not so important now, although I think a few places still grow it. But it's a lovely heritage apple to have uh, in your garden or at your allotment. And uh, a nice uh, yield on here as well, so that's uh, really good. So I'm just picking some strawberries here. So these two are variety Malling Centenary. Centenary is the only variety I'm growing at the moment in the garden here. I would like to grow some different varieties. I'll probably look into purchasing some new plants soon. So that's something I uh, might consider doing. You can get uh, ones that ripen at different times of the year. So that's really good. And ones that keep ripening throughout the entire season. They don't give you that much at any one time, but they're known as perpetual strawberries. So I've grown all sorts of varieties of strawberries over the years. Royal Sovereign, which is a very historical one, not high yielding, but fantastic taste. Cambridge Favourite, a very well-known one. El Santa, that's a nice strawberry. That is 
or certainly was once a very important uh, commercial variety. I don't know if it is anymore. I'm trying to think of other names I've grown, plenty of them, but uh, yep, you get the idea. Look into different varieties if you want to grow them. So yeah, ah, plenty. oh look at that one, that's a nice one. So yeah, plenty of strawberries to come. So over here now, this is a variety of cherry called Sunburst and it's growing in this container here. So if you're living in an area where you're not allowed, maybe you're renting or whatever, you're not allowed to have uh, fruit trees in the ground, you can grow them in containers. Now, of course, this is not uh, that maneuverable in this container, but I've got plenty of other fruit trees in smaller containers. We'll have a look at those in a moment. But yeah, this is cherry variety sunburst. And uh, you can see that lovely sort of amount of strawberry, amount of cherries there, really nice. Covered up so the birds don't get them. But yeah, certainly looking very promising in regards to cherries here this year. So over here, now this is part of my container grown fruit orchard. So very good to have a container grown fruit orchard, especially if you're you know, not living somewhere for too long. Maybe you're not allowed to plant trees in the ground where you are. Maybe you've got no more room, as is in the case here really for planting trees, but yet you still want to have some more varieties for whatever reason. So yeah, very good. Now. This here is apple variety winter gem and they're ready around October time and they can actually keep quite well into the following spring. So very nice long keeping apple there. Got some water here and uh, must make sure though you keep your plants watered, especially of course if they're in containers because they've got to get all their water from the container. Victoria apple here. And down here I've got a fig. Now I'm not sure what variety this is, but it's got three lovely figs on it. And this is in a small container. So this is the sort of thing, right? If you're, you want to make sure you've got a maneuverable plant, this needs water by the way, I've just given it some, which is why it looks a bit droopy. But do you see it's got some figs on that? I hope you can see them there. But yeah, this is very maneuverable. So you could have like a few of these, and let's say you're only gonna live somewhere for like six months to a year, whatever, you can take them with you. That way you can still grow some of your own uh, fruit. That's a great thing to do. So I'm gonna wrap this video up now. So here, that's my fruit. So nice crop there. Gonna be eating these this evening. Absolutely wonderful. Nutrition, beauty, and very satisfying to come out to your own garden and do some picking. So yeah. How's your garden doing? As always, I'm interested in how you're getting on. And as you know, I always appreciate your time checking in with me. There's loads more to come, got loads to come up. And my next video will hopefully be a, a midsummer, if you want to call it that, midsummer planting video. I've got plenty to be planting now. So that's uh, good. If you'd like to, subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe, don't. Please feel free to like it if you like it, and share it with anyone you think may find it interesting or useful. See you soon and all the best.